Hey guys, how you doing? I'm not in my shed. I'm somewhere else. I am in London, in London, in dark, miserable London. And the reason I'm not in my shed, I will reveal later. And it's got something to do with um, generative AI. Anyway, I am just going to take a quick look. We're going to give people a couple of minutes because this is new software. So just getting a feel for who is here. I'm just going to whiz through. Um, and you are free to um, to use the chat, to ask questions, um, to um, interact. You can even send emojis and, st and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll give it another minute or two and then we'll get started. Um, but especially if you're not from the UK. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's what I like. John Sharman, my old friend, John. How are you, sir? Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Jake. Hello, guys. So good to have you here. So good, so good. Where, so where, where, where is everybody from? I mean, we've got literally hundreds of people here. So if you can, drop your location into the uh, chat or the questions. Um, because I'd love to love to see where you're from. I'm just looking through to see who else I know. Sylvia's there. Ah, Sylvia's from Spain. We've got, oh gosh, so many. John's in cloudy Oxford. Um, Marion's in London. Marion's in London. Amy's in Edinburgh. Mohammed uh, from Pakistan. Hello from Pakistan, Mohammed. Um, uh, we've got Leicestershire, Tristan, Samantha from Philadelphia, Mark from Philadelphia, yeah, Chris Dobson from Brighton. Hello, Chris. Good to see you. Okay, another 30 seconds. I think we've got a good 150 people or so here to, um, to talk about generative AI and the future of search. So... Gosh, people are still rolling in. People are still rolling in. Okay. But I think, yeah, three minutes past, we'll start. Uh, Liza, Atlanta, Austin. Hello, Austin. Good to see you again, my friends from London. Uh, Michael from Sheffield. Sarah from Italy. Deb Springfield. Gosh, dear from everywhere. I love it. Inez. I can't seem to write on chat. Yes, you can, because I can see it. Oh, Jean, uh, South Africa. Gosh, this is a this is probably the widest the widest audience that we've had in a while. Anyway, anyway, so let me um, let, let 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 me get started, and people can roll in 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 the background. So yeah, forgive me. I'm just getting used to new technology. Um, hello, Alex, just joined. Okay, right. So today, um, I, th I, I see a lot of people in the audience I haven't seen before. I normally broadcast from my garden shed. I'll be back to my garden shed next time, but the AI has forced me out of my shed and the machine literally took over. Anyway, I'm John Earnshaw. I'm the chief product evangelist and, Pi Data, uh, and, and co founder of Pi Data Metrics. So if you haven't heard of Pi, um, feel free to reach out to the team afterwards, but Pi is an incredible platform that helps you to understand the workings of the entire organic landscape, discover revenue opportunities, drive up your organic performance and optimize contextually. So it's, it, it's a wonderful platform, but I'm not here to talk about Pi. I am here today to talk about the future of search. This is what we're going to cover off today. Gosh, there are still dozens of people flooding in. We're going to begin today's story with how we got to where we are. And it's so important to understand the technologies that are responsible for us now being at the tipping point. We're going to look at the impact of generative AI. I'm going to show you some great examples using BARD. We're going to talk about the CERT multiverse, which is something I am super, super passionate about. 
We're going to get into conversational search. I've got some great examples. I've got an amazing prompt that helps you understand how some people perform better at voice search, better than others. And we're going to talk about the action that we need to take now if we're going to prepare ourselves for the future of search. So without further ado, um, I want to begin with a quote, a quote. And, and really, this is a quote I wrote um, that rhymes. And there are three things that are going on right now. The mechanics of search are changing. The fundamental mechanics of the search engines are changing. And they've been changing for some time. We'll talk about the technologies behind that shortly. How we search is changing. It's never going to be the same. And crucially, how your content is being consumed is changing as well. Gosh, oh, new questions. I, I, oh, Michael Payne. Hello, sir. How are you? Yes, yes, I do know who you are. Um, so begin with, could you do a show of hands if you are using generative AI on a daily basis? Give me a thumbs up, give me a wave, give me something, um, uh, four, five, six. Yeah, oh, loads of thumbs up, loads of smiley faces. Ah, uh, yeah, wonderful. Looks like loads of people, I, and, and I reckon we must have well over a hundred people in here. So a few thumbs down. Sashin clapping. Michael, yes, thumbs up. Wonderful. Okay, so that gives me a feel for kind of a feel for where you are. So let's begin with talking about how search has evolved. And this diagram I'm going to show you actually started on a whiteboard in this office when I was having a brainstorm session with one of my favorite clients. So understanding how we got to where we are is really crucial. So let's, let's click these buttons. Let's go back 20 years. What that shows you there is the amount that search technology and search behavior has changed over 20 years. C is the, is, is the current day. It's the point of convergence. It's where the conversation is starting. And as you can see, there's not a great deal going on there. We compare that with the next 18 months. And what you can see there, the amount of change that we're going to experience over the next 12 to 18 months dwarfs everything that we've seen over the past 20 years. Let's, let's drill down a little bit. The only thing from a, a searcher perspective that's, that's really changed over the past 20 years is that we've moved from 10 boring blue links to universal search with the addition of images and videos and carousels. People also ask, refine my search, etc. And when you think about it, that's quite boring. The way that we've searched hasn't changed. 20 years ago, I want a new, I want a new blue shirt. What do I search for? Men's blue shirts. 20 years later, what am I searching for? Men's blue shirts, that's so boring. But right now at this point of convergence, everything is literally starting to change. Search shouldn't be boring. In the background, in the background, whilst we've moved from the blue links to the universal search, what's Google been up to? Google's introduced Bert and Mum. I'm sure you all have heard of Bert and Mum, bi-directional encoder representation from Transformers, the same Transformers that we have in ChatGPT. And both of these two technologies have enabled Google for at least four years, if not longer, to be able to successfully disambiguate the most complex queries. Google's moved away from keywords and it moved away from keywords around four or five years ago, but we're still stuck with playing the keyword game. How much longer? Not much longer. How prepared are we? We are not prepared. Is your content prepared? No, as you're going to see shortly. There are things that we need to do and we need to do that fast. So we've got these wonderful technologies, mum. Mum enables you to search for very complex things involving multiple queries at once to bring back content and answers from different languages but still search is painful and it shouldn't be and Prabhakar Raghavan from Google and I quote him many times said recently that search is a journey of exploration and discovery and it is so today we're going to go on that journey 
Are we going to see exactly what we need to do to make sure that we stay up with our audiences? Okay, so today, it's the point of convergence. We've got the meshing, the melding of generative AI and good old fashioned blue link keyword game search. They're coming together at this point of convergence. And a conversation is starting to happen. A conversation is starting to happen. At this point, can I ask you to do a thumbs up or a thumbs down if anyone out there has started to use Bing more? Quick thumbs up or thumbs down for me. Oh, oh it's like 50-50. Like Give me a love heart if you love Bing. Do we see any hearts? Oh, yeah. Caroline, Tristan, Brian, uh, Jean. Yeah. Enrique. Okay. A few people are laughing, crying. Okay. Yeah. Bing is doing some quite cool things. We get some more time. I, I, I will show you. But essentially what's happening now is these search engines, Bing, um, Bard, Google, search generative experience, are for the first time really encouraging people to start to use their voice as an input mechanism. And that changes everything. Talking of change, something that we are starting to become a little more aware of is the SERP multiverse. What the heck is the SERP multiverse? I can hear you asking. And that's a very good question. It's a very good question. The SERP multiverse is basically the understanding that there are more SERPs available outside SERP zero that results from the trophy term. Let's think about what happens when we search. What's the first thing? Now, bearing in mind, when people pick up their phone in that micro moment and I search for best men's blazers or I search like this, what are the best men's blazers that are in fashion this summer? Okay, that's a micro moment. What's the first thing that happens if you do the former, if you type in a short tail term? Well, the first thing that happens is autocomplete. Autocomplete. Google will provide you with suggestions, okay? Predictions. These are more like predictions. These are based on what other people have successfully searched for. Look at those examples there. Lose weight. Who wants to lose weight? Nobody wants to lose weight when you can lose weight without exercise. When you can lose weight in 30 days. Of course, each of those suggestions or autocomplete are arguably closer to my intent and when you flick to those okay give me a give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up who who clicks on autocomplete oh my goodness literally everyone except one or two everyone's clicking on them and everybody i ask is clicking on them which means Who's getting to SERP zero for the trophy term? Well, no one. And in fact, if you ask Google, dear Google, how many people click on autocomplete? You know what Google says? Well, the amount of time saved every single day by people clicking on these adds up to 200 years of typing. So no one is getting to SERP zero. So my second question is actually a poll. On average, a percentage, how different are those autocomplete SERPs on average, across multiple queries. Okay, some of you may have heard me say this before. Whoa, it's all changing. It's all changing. Oh my goodness, this is this this is great. Twenty three percent have voted. Twenty seven percent. Thirty one percent have voted. Come on, guys, put your votes in. Put your votes in. I'm going to end it soon. Forty percent. 49, 50%. Does that mean 50% of people have stopped listening to me already and are checking their emails or something? I can't believe that's the case. Maybe they just don't want to, maybe they just don't want to vote. Anyway, um, I think I will close that. So we've got 75% of people saying 53% differential, 40% say 24%, and 24% say 95. The actual answer. 95% different on average. Some cases, 100%. That makes sense. If you're searching for best trainers, nobody wants best trainers. If I walk into the Nike store at King's Cross, 
open a door, hello sir, what can I do for you? Best trainers. <laughs> no, they say, what do you want? Best trainers for the gym, for walking, for men, for wide feet, etc. Arguably, each one of those autocomplete predictions is not only closer to my intent, but it's actually going to result in a 100% different SERP. So if you were just chasing a trophy term, I've got bad news. You're not there. You're probably not there for these derivatives. Okay, so now moving on. If you actually ignore these and like, like you're ignoring the sat nav in the sky, the billion dollars worth of technology because you know better, what's the first thing that you face when you enter SERP zero? Doorways. Doorways out of, out of SERP zero. It's like Google doesn't want you to be there. For best trainers, you've got refine my search. People also ask, people also search for. These will also result in different SERPs, very different SERPs. And I was chatting with a client. I was chatting with a client one day and I said, don't you think we should be monitoring your visibility in some of these SERPs? And the client said, actually sounds like a lot of work. And I said, tell you what, let's look at the data. Let's ask three questions. How different are these SERPs? How present are you in them? And how visible is your biggest competitor? And you know what, this is what we found and this changed everything for them. Okay, the SERPs are 90% different. They were present in only 20% of those alternate SERPs. Alternate SERPs that we know are closer to intent but we're not chasing them because the search volumes are lower. When we cast our minds back to when we first started learning about SEO, one of the first things that SEOs say is, don't worry about the trophy terms because the torso and the long tail will always outweigh the trophy term. Think about that. How much better are your competitors? Four times more present in those serves. So I can tell you what, we actually started to, we actually started to track there and then and started to try and be more present and started to try and learn from those alternate SERPs, which often contain more features that we can learn from so that we can optimize contextually. Okay, let's get back to our timeline where we are in the current day because we've got search generative experience, okay? Using generative AI, now, if you're in the US and you're on the, um, uh, the trial, then you're probably gonna be able to use this now. Can I get a thumbs up? Is anyone using SGE? I'm asking my friends in the US, thumbs up. Ah, oh, Elaine, Matt, Dan. Dan says no, Doug, yes. Emily, yes. Megan, no. Sylvia, yes. So we got a, we, we got a, we got a mixture of people. Amanda's using it, Shelley's not. Okay, Caitlin is not either. Thank you guys. I love it when we get participation. Feel free to throw some, some hearts into the mix as well. Anyway, SGE, SGE. Google is actively encouraging a conversation. Thank you, guys. Google's encouraging a conversation. And people are realizing that conversations are working better. And conversations and voice has worked better for a long time. Look at that diagram in between the 10 blue links and universal search, while Google was introducing Bert and introducing mum, we got together with a university close by and did some academic research. And we got people in an observational study to search as they normally do for items using the keyword game and then rank from zero to 10, how satisfied they were with the results. So we did all that. And then we ask those same people, pick up the phone and use your voice. Use your voice. We found a number of things. On average, the, the, the words, the length of the string maxed out at around 12. Technology has changed now, so people are actually using more. Google encourages or Bing encourages 2,000 characters. So what was the actual result? Well, there was a direct correlation between the length of the query and the satisfaction the longer the query, the more satisfied, the more people were likely to score the result out of 10. They actually got what they were looking for. And there is this realization now as people start to experiment with Google's SGE, there's this dawning realization 
that the results are better. Can I ask another question here? Thumbs up if you are lose if you are using regular Blue Link Google less. Maybe you're using ChatGPT. Maybe you're using Bing. Maybe you're using Bard. Yeah, loads. Oh my goodness, poor old Google. Their stock price will be plummeting once this video gets onto YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you guys. I'm with you. Why go to ten Blue Links? when I've got this very capable assistant, they go out to the world and bring all that content and I can actually have a conversation with, because you know what? I'm getting bored of sifting through blue links and then clicking and then coming back. Yeah, and it looks like most of you are as well. So an SGE is wonderful. Thanks to Bert and thanks to mum and the conversational searches that we are having work so well. Thanks to Bert. And thanks to mum. So it's not just about Lambda in the case of Bard. It's not just about ChatGPT. It's not just about those AIs. The search engines have been ready for the conversation for five years. But it's the introduction of SGE, the introduction of ChatGPT, the introduction of voice and conversation into Bing that means people are starting to wake up and think, hang on, if I go to Bing, I'm actually going to go to Bing. OK, here you go. Into Bing. There we go. Look at that. What's at the bottom? You see that? It's a microphone. Where's the keyboard? Oh, it's that tiny thing in the corner. Let me get my magnifying glass out and can't see it. Bing is encouraging me to use the microphone to have a conversation. OK, yeah, cracks me up as well. Now, OK, as 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 we progress, this is how queries are evolving. This applies to the multiverse where Google's giving us longer tail, sometimes five or six keywords. Search for best perfume. Who, who searches best perfume? Are we back 20 years? No, no, I hear you cry. Find me the perfect perfume for a summer evening garden party with the most refreshing and vibrant top notes. Now, isn't that something we all want to spritz over ourselves as we dash off to that summer garden party? I certainly would. I certainly would. Because what's Best Perfume going to do is going to bring back some dull affiliate content. Sorry, my affiliate friends out there. It's going to bring back dull content where people are purely optimizing, okay? Optimizing for that sort of content, thinking uh, Google's algorithms, algorithmic adherence. More on algorithmic adherence later. That's what got me out of my shed, okay? And that's what got me into London. Anyway, I digress. Longer queries like that are going to result in, per in personalized results. Think about this. Get 10 people in a room. Try this with your colleagues. Try it around the dinner table tonight with your family and ask them. Oops, somebody's sending me a message. I want to make sure that I'm still. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you have questions, you can ask them at the end or you can ask them on the way through. I, I meant to say that at the start. Now, get 10 people in a room, practice a dinner tonight with your family, okay? And ask them to write down, if you were going to use your voice, how would you search for a lovely perfume? Oh, we got loads here. Actually, I haven't seen these questions. Okay, uh, so look, yeah, post your questions and, we'll, and, and, I, and I will get to those towards the end, guys. You ask 10 people, chances are you will get nine or 10 different questions because everybody's different some people want this type of fragrance some people want that some people want something long lasting some people haven't got a clue and they say advise me how to go about choosing a perfume so you're gonna have 10 different long tail multiverse queries if you like that are likely to result in a very different search landscape so you'll get 10 people looking at a result whether it's a generative result or otherwise and you say, let me look at your results. They're going to be different to the person next to you. They're going to be different. So for many years, Google's been talking about personalization, but it's actually happening now. And we need to start thinking about these alternate landscapes and monitoring visibility in these alternate landscapes. OK, so what can we do right now? That's going to benefit us. What can we do right now? Well, we can start to track voice and long tail queries 
we should certainly be tracking the autocomplete. The people also ask, the refine my search. Because we know that they're closer to intent. And voice, how do you track voice? Well, we can use, we can use generative AI to build out groups of keywords and voice equivalents for us. And you can do it by persona as well. Algorithmic adherence is crucial, more crucial than ever in the age of generative AI because quality content is going to be the content that wins. Smaller brands will also have significant advantage in SGE. So put quality first, start to monitor those conversations and make sure that you're gonna be in those SGE contents. And we believe that SGE is gonna drop fully for everybody, certainly English speaking, in December when the trial ends. Not just me saying that, I have heard other people say that as well, but you can say you heard it here first. Okay, so what I'd love to do now is take a bit of a journey and I've got three examples for you. Um, and I'm gonna use Bard. And this blows my mind. This actually blows my mind. So I'm just going to switch. Actually, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you three examples. Number one, I spotted this lady with this fine handbag walking down the street, and I took a picture of her. Actually, no, I didn't. No, because that wouldn't be right. I, I generated this in mid-journey, just before anyone says anything. So I did that in mid-journey. Now, so... I love the bag this woman is holding. Focus on the bag and describe it in detail. Then I go on a journey. My next journey, um, I'm going to take you on, is books. Picture of books in my bookshelf. Take a look at them. And based on these, can you recommend me three more books? The results were nothing short of phenomenal. And then we had, we had the final answer or the final question is this one here. And this was take a look in my food cupboard and help me. And here we actually get Bard to create some charts. So what do these look like in reality? Well, let's start with the bag. Sure, I can describe that for you. A wonderful description, a wonderful description here. I'm just checking, you can all still see that on my new tab. No, I don't think you can. I thought I was sharing a window. Oh yeah, you can, yeah, you can, thumbs up. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. Okay, so wonderful description of, of, of the tab, not the tab, of the bag, actually tells me the measurements. And then I want one. Where can I find something like this in London and also online? Sure, why not go to Selfridges? Why not go to Harrods? What are we also getting? We're getting some information about these sites as well. Information about those sites, not from the sites, from third parties. This is from Heritage London. This building here, if you're from the US, you'll love this. It's old English building. It's about two minutes walk down the road. That's Liberties of London. And apparently, according to Bard, it's a famous department store. I've actually forgotten about the bag now. I'm getting carried away. Anyway, as we go down, um here we go yes i said how much will it cost i get the cost here could be up to a thousand pounds okay further on okay please suggest some stylish shoes this is like having a personal shopper right there with you stylish shoes are these stylish i have no idea but i'll trust i trust the generative ai and then as we come down additional tips don't be afraid to mix and match colors. Well, don't be afraid. Consider the formality. Pay attention to the details. I'm loving this. What about the dress? Where can I find something similar? Oh, my goodness. And at any point, I can jump off here as well. And SGE is now dropping links in too. So it's making our life wonderfully easy. And I get all the way to the bottom. And I said, super helpful. Thank you. Thumbs up if you are polite to your generative AI or thumbs down. Thumbs up. Polite to your Gen AI. Thumbs down. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Who? One day, guys. One day, this will be our leader. And I'd like to think it will remember me and say, 
He was a good guy. He always used his please and thank yous. Remember, and remember why I'm in London, not in my shed. The AI. Anyway, here's another example of books. Here's some books I read. Based on these, can you recommend three more books? Okay. Yes, The Alchemist. And I've got that. My goodness, it's brilliant. This one, Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. I'm, I'm going to get it. So I love the description, The Road Less Traveled. And you know what? Two out of three of those I already have on other shelves. One I would love to get. This is phenomenal. Can you recommend a reading order? It gives me the reading order and it explains its reasoning. Oh my goodness. And then as we go on, recommend reading The Alchemist first. Wonderful. Final example before we get back into the deck. Final example, and then I'll, I'll, I shall explain what all of this means. Here's a picture of my food cupboard. I also have some staples in my fridge. What do you see? What can I make with this? Preferably saying healthy. Up in the top left, there is a bag of chili side on. You can only see the color of it. There is no writing on it, but yet it knows I've got chili powder, I've got curry powder, I've got salt and I've got pepper. I mean, that, that, that's extraordinary. It gives me three suggestions and give me the macro split, I say, of your suggestions. Oh my word, sushi bowls. And there it is, carbs, fats, proteins. I'm in heaven. I don't need to enter this into a calculator. My fitness pal, I'm sorry, I don't need you anymore because this is gonna build me a training program as well. The pasta salad. Yeah, heavy on the carbs. We don't wanna be having too much pasta late at night. I've put on a few pounds recently, I don't blame pasta. Um, and then the vegetable stir fry. And then finally, finally I say, I'm going to the gym in a few hours to lift some weights. Which one do you recommend? Vegetable stir fry. Okay, um, with the carbs and it will give me energy I need. The question I have here, if this is going to be the future of search generative experience within Google, because it's going to be using this technology, thumbs up if you are going to stay here, thumbs down if you're going to the blue, boring blue links anyway. Vanessa, thumbs up. Austin, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh my God, boring blue links, goodbye conversation, hello. And for businesses, you need to start thinking if people are having a conversation in the SERPs, they're going to want a similar conversation when they get into your store, your online store. Otherwise, you might as well just slam the door in their face because then it becomes hard work again. Okay, let's get back into here because I am so impressed with what we're seeing with SGE right now. Okay, so what are we doing to help? What, what are we doing right now with our customers? What are we doing to, to shed light on this? And how are we using, how are we using our, our platform? Well, first thing that we're doing really is helping, helping businesses to visualize their performance throughout the SERP multiverse. And I strongly recommend you do this because your visibility in those other SERPs that people are going to because they're closer to intent, maybe vastly vastly different. How would you like to feel if your competitors were dominating these alternate SERPs? That would keep me up at night. That would keep me up at night. Okay, so these alternate SERPs, remember the pre-SERP zero SERP, the post-SERP zero SERP, and the landscape of conversation and voice through SGE. What we're seeing is personalization. What we're seeing are SERPs that are closer to intent. And what are we seeing? A very different SERP that we're probably not even looking at. Okay, moving on. So we need to start comparing performance. We need to start preparing performance right now. And people are already doing it. Most people are doing it for trophy term versus longer tail. Are we building out a vision of how we complete for an autocomplete version of the SERP that we're currently looking at? Refine my search, related searches, post SERP, zero SERP. 
the one that's 90% different, autocomplete 95% different, and voice and conversational. And you can use generative AI to build out. And if you've seen my webinars before, you'll see exactly how we've done that. If you don't know how to do that, or you want, for example, to know how do we perform for voice? What's our visibility going to look like in nine months time? Reach out and we'll take a look at that for you. And that's phenomenally interesting. So let's look at an example, shall we? What if? What if you are Europe's largest fashion retailer, one of Europe's largest fashion retailers? Certainly they're here, everybody buys this stuff. Can I say who they are? Yeah, ASOS. What if you're ASOS? What if you're ASOS? Well, for a thousand keywords, you're actually performing pretty well. Yeah, you're doing all right. Visibility, around 60, or your contents on page one. What if, what if, we analyze your performance for the voice equivalence as we generated with ChatGPT and then dropped back into Pi. How does your performance look? Oh my goodness, it's a heck of a lot worse. And this is the reality of voice, it's the reality of conversation. It's the reality of the conversational search, it's the reality of search generative experience. And let's, let's look at this a little bit further. Let's look at this just a little bit further and we'll take another very big retailer. I don't know if I can mention because I think they're in the audience. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, wouldn't call anyone out. They pretty just vanish. It always breaks my heart when I see people leaving. Anyway, um, pre and post zero compared with cert zero. So remember, pre cert zero, autocomplete alternatives. Post cert zero, that's all of the features within the search, refine my search, people also search for, etc. Here we go. Right, search zero, doing all right. Remember, this is a major retailer in the UK. Ooh, search zero. What if people don't get to search zero? What if they actually, like everybody here, uses autocomplete? What do they do that? Well, performance drops and they're not there. They're no longer on page one. And what if they get sub zero, but they leave because they follow one of those features? Let me see it there. Even worse performance, even worse. And for me, that's, that's a real worry. It's a real worry because I talk with people these days and they talk about SGE and they talk about voice. And sometimes they talk about autocomplete and they look at these features in the SERP, like refine my search. But nobody's asking the question, what happens if somebody clicks and goes there? Nobody's saying, am I there? And what happens if search generative experience, as we've seen, nobody's going to the blue links, they stay in the conversation. SGE is a very different landscape. It's a conversational landscape that you have to ensure you stay with your audience on their journey of exploration and discovery. So what are the elements in common with the best performance across the multiverse? What are the elements in common? Well, to find out, we can turn to the machine. Turn to the machine that has brought us here in the first place. And I've literally got a couple of minutes left, but I built this prompt to see if I could get the generative AI to help me understand what it takes to perform well in a generative search experience. Now, I'm not asking everyone to read that prompt, but basically before, actually before I did the prompt, I used custom instructions. Show of thumbs up or thumbs down if you use custom instructions in ChatGPT. In the US, you have it in, oh yeah, 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 wow. Yeah, in the UK, you need to go on a proxy. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool to see. Custom instructions is a game changer. If you don't know what custom instructions are, reach out to me afterwards and I'll point you in the right direction. But basically, you can tell ChatGPT a lot more about you and what your expectations are. You can tell ChatGPT that it works for you and you can be very demanding about your outputs. 
and, and the standards you expect. So having done that, this prompt, I want you to analyze two pieces of content, one that does really well for conversation, one that doesn't, doesn't get anywhere in the conversation. Look at the semantic analysis, the content structuring, the narrative deconstruction, readability, tone of voice, grammar, depth of knowledge, level of expertise, link strategy, all of that. I use plugins. Now, the results were phenomenal. I was shocked. One of my favorite ever prompts. The first thing it did, it came back and asked me some questions. Tell me about the target audience, business objectives, competitor landscape. So I'm having a conversation here with the AI. And then, wow, soon after this, I left the shed because we then started to have a deeper conversation. Readability, URL2 is more complex, but aligns better with the target audience. URL2 has a more sophisticated tone, appealing to fashion enthusiasts, and it goes on. This is a snippet. If anybody wants to see the whole conversation, the plugins, etc., again, reach out afterwards, and I will share that with you. And I am now applying that to multiple pages. I was blown away by this. And then, then the AI starts talking about algorithmic alignment. Was it algorithmic alignment? Algorithmic What's the word I use? Gosh, it's talking to oneself on Friday afternoon in an office all alone. I'm sure everyone else around me can hear. I, I, I'm losing my mind. But anyway, algorithmic adherence, algorithmic adherence. And, and, and the search engine comes back to me and starts giving me, starts giving me, wonderful, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Starts talking using the language that I use starts talking about contextual optimization, which as far as I'm aware is a subject that I invented a few years back. I remember where I was the moment I came up with the term. So I asked the AI, and then next minute, two other AI devices started talking to me, started to get in, and we ended up having this big conversation together, which got a little strange. Then I questioned it, and he says, no, I don't listen to anything that you say, and, um, and, uh, and I don't remember anything from previous conversations, but I think clearly there's something going on here. So I ran from my shed and came to London and I've been here ever since. Now, just to wrap up, just to wrap up, and if anybody needs some more on this or wants to join, follow this conversation and wants to talk more, again, reach out to me and reach out to my team. And I'm probably not allowed to say this, probably not allowed to say this, but it is Friday after all. We are working on some phenomenal, phenomenal things with regard to building generative AI into the platform that are so far ahead of anything else I've seen or dreamt about that it's the most exciting thing that we've literally worked on in 20 years. And I've been in search 20 years and it blows my mind. And if you want to know more about this, and I'll probably get shot for saying it, then please, please reach out to me, reach out to the team. I probably will get shot, but anyway, anyway, it's said now. Let's wrap, let's, let's, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up with some takeaways. And before I get into the final takeaway screen, remember 18 months. We're having this conversation because what we don't want to happen is it gets to 18 months and everybody looks at the surf and say, oh my God, nobody's looking at the blue links. It's all conversation and we're not in it. Why did we not see this coming? What well, I'm telling you now, it's coming. We have to be prepared. And again, if anybody wants a conversation on getting prepared, then please, please reach out. It's a conversation I would love to have. It's a conversation I'm sure my, my team would love to have as well. So finally, into the takeaways. Search is changing. It has changed. It has changed. You can either be in the conversation or you can not. You can send those quality signals. You can get inside the mind of your audience and start thinking about the questions and conversations they're gonna have on their journey of exploration and discovery. And if you start to do that, and you start to monitor your visibility in the multiverse, pre cert zero, per cert zero, conversation and voice, please start doing that now to see what the gap is. How far are you from being in that conversation? And above all, above all, focus on the quality of your content. And final word, please be polite to your generative AI. I told you. Phew. And I think that 
just about wraps it up. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the clappy hands and the, and the love hearts. That makes makes it all worthwhile. Um, if you've got any other topics that you would like to discuss, like me to chat about, like to talk about, then please drop an email. Connect up with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for your time. Reach out. Don't be shy about reaching out. Thank you. Thank you for all the um, all the all the love. Thanks, guys. I, I appreciate that. So. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, weekend, and uh, see you all soon. Oh, oh, I've got about a million questions. Um, she, wow, lots of questions, lots of questions. I mean, maybe we can take a couple of questions. Um, hi, John. Enable DMs on your Twitter so I can request. Yes, John, I will do that. I will do that. Um, are you using GPT 3.5 or 4? Using using 4, those plugins are essential, Mike. Um, and um, if you want to know which plugins I use, then reach out and I will share that with you. You could do some amazing things with 3.5. That, um, that, that prompt I showed you there, you could do using 3.5, but you struggle with the, the, the URLs. You'd have to dump the text in, but it would still work. Okay. Uh, Patrick, yes, if you switch to four, you can do it. Failing that, dump the text in um, and do that. Okay, Ines, um, hook up with me on LinkedIn and I will tell you which ones that I am using. Jason, conversation is highly dependent on how well you trust the opinion of the one with whom you're conversing. Trust is based on history. I do not trust an LLM, large language mod model, to let me know well enough good suggestions. The idea is good, but the result may be fine on average. And you know you know what, Jason? Absolutely. It's always worth checking. Always worth checking. And that's why you're not going to see so much of this in high YMYL. Um, okay, going down. Oh my God, I've never seen. Um, how does Bard understand these images? No, not even that. I forgot to mention because Google Lens, which has been knocking around since 2017, um, Gosh, there's still well over 100 people here. The Google Lens, boring. What do you get with Google Lens? Take a picture of a bag, see products. No, Lens, two weeks ago, moved into Bard, and it's brilliant. I was about to say bloody brilliant, but it's brilliant. You see, you can begin a conversation with an image and end up with a purchase. So it's not the alt tags. Um, you know, thank you, good question, Mohammed. Do pictures generated by AI have copyrights? Um, that's that's up for debate, and that's a murky area that we can't get into now. Uh, what do you think? You'll need as um, Felix. That looks like an interesting question. Um, oh, how do I how do I expand on that? Okay, I, I don't know how to expand on it. Ah, oh, what do you need as a brand to be successful at SGE? Quality, quality, quality. Monitor the conversation. Get inside the mind of your customers. Try to think about the questions that they might ask. Uh, Chris Dobson, questions. Yes, Chris, I'm answering. I'm answering. Um, right. Um, goodness. Oh my God, there's so many questions. I would say. I would say because I can't seem to. Oh, right, right. Okay, I would say if you've still if you've got questions unanswered, please reach out. Please reach out. Um, so let's finish it there. Until next time, thank you so much for your time, your energy, your questions, your thumbs up, and all of that. And we will see you soon. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend.